Hello fellow game developers. In this video, I'll teach you how to add joystick controllers to your mobile games for movement and shooting. Let's get started. I've gone ahead and set up a camera that would follow the player, an empty canvas, and a player with a rigid body with no gravity and a capsule collider. Now let's head over to the asset store and look for joystick. Add this one to your assets and in Unity, open up the package manager and find the asset, then download it and import it to your project. Inside the prefabs folder, there are four types of joysticks you can choose from. I'm gonna go with the fixed one. Drag and drop it on the canvas. I've already made a new sprite for it, so I'm gonna change the background and the handles image. Then I'm gonna make it a bit bigger and position it where I want it to be. Then let's unpack the prefab so the changes don't affect the original prefab and rename it to movement joystick. Now let's create a new folder called scripts and inside it make a new script to handle the movement. Let's get rid of these and first we'll need a public joystick named joystick. Joystick is the name of the script our joystick asset is using and by getting a reference to it we get access to it to then be able to figure out in which direction the player is moving the joystick. Next, we need a public float speed for the speed of the movement, a private vector 3 called input to store the player's input, and lastly a private rigid body called RB to get access to the player's rigid body component. Now in the awake function, let's get a reference to the rigid body by saying RB is equal to get component rigid body. This will get the rigid body of the game object this script is attached to and assign it to the RB. Next, let's make a new method called move and pass it in the update. Inside it, we'll say input.set joystick.horizontal for the x, 0 for the y, and joystick.vertical for the z. So we're setting the value of the vector to the input we're receiving from the player on each frame. Then we'll say rb.velocity is equal to input times speed. This way the player will move in the same direction as the joystick handle. Let's head back to Unity, attach the script to the player and drag and drop the joystick on its variable. Then give a value to the speed and let's go for a test run. Perfect. Now let's duplicate the joystick and rename it to shooting joystick. Then change the sprites. Set the anchor point to the bottom right corner and position it where you want. Then let's make a new script called shooting and drag and drop it on the player. But before working on the script, we of course need a bullet to shoot. I've already made a mesh in Blender. Let's drag and drop it in the scene and I'm gonna change its layer so it would get affected by the lights as that's how I've set up the lighting. You might not have to do that. Then let's scale it down, that should be good enough. Next let's create a new material and attach it to the bullet to give it a color. Then make a new folder called prefabs and drag and drop the bullet in there. Now we can remove the bullet from the scene and use the prefab to spawn it when the player is shooting. Next, we need to make an empty game object as the child of the player to hold the position we want to spawn the bullets from. Now let's open the script and the first thing we need is again a reference to the joystick. Then a public game object called bullets to store the bullet prefab, a public transform named bullet holder to get the bullet holder's position, a private float called angle to get the angle in which we need to rotate the player along the y-axis and a private float to store the cooldown time so we don't shoot bullets on each frame. Then let's make a new method called rotate and call it in the update. Inside that we'll say if joystick.direction is not equal to vector2.0 Joystick.direction is the joystick's horizontal and vertical inputs. So we're saying if they're not zero, meaning if the player is moving the joystick, execute the following code. Here we need to get the angle and then apply the rotation. To get the angle, we have to write 
angle is equal to mass f dot a tan 2 joystick dot horizontal for the first argument, joystick dot vertical for the second one, times mass f dot rad to deck. Explaining the a tan 2 method would need a whole separate video. For now, just know that the whole line is a mathematical operation that returns the angle at which you need to rotate an object along an axis to face a point in the two other axes. So here we have a point in the x and z axis, which is the position of the handle. Then we use this line to calculate the player's needed rotation along the y axis to face that point. Now that we have the angle, let's apply the rotation by saying transform the rotation is equal to quaternion dot Euler, 0 for the x, angle for the y, and 0 for the z. Then for the shooting, let's make a new function called shoot, and again we have to make sure if the player is using the joystick. Then we'll say instantiate, bullet for the first parameter, bullet holder dot position for the second one, transform the rotation for the third one. The instantiate method, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with, is a spawner. So essentially we're saying you spawn the bullet at the bullet holder's position, which is the empty game object we just made, and give it the player's rotation. Because later when we apply a force to the bullet to make it move, we'll make it move forward. So its rotation should be the same as players, so it would go in the direction the player is facing. Now you might ask why did we need to make a whole separate function for shooting? Why didn't we just instantiate the bullet inside the rotate function where we had already checked if the player is using the joystick? The answer is if we did, the bullets would have been spawned at each frame. Now there are some ways to use it there and still have a cooldown duration, but it'll be just overcomplicating things. So why would you do that when you can just use the invoke repeating method? This method will call a function after the first amount of time in seconds you give it, and then will keep calling it after the second amount of time. You can also change the second argument to for example disable shooting for the first 3 seconds of the game. Now let's head back to Unity, drag and drop the shooting joystick on the joystick, then let's lock the player's inspector so we don't lose it, and get the bullet and bullet holder and assign them to their variables. Let's test it. Awesome! The bullets are being spawned each point for seconds and the rotation is on point. Now for the bullets, make a new script called bullets, get the bullet prefab back in the scene, attach the script to it and apply the changes. Now each bullet that gets spawned will have a bullet script attached to it. Open up the script. First thing we need is a public float for the speed of the bullet. And then a reference to its rigid body to be able to apply the force. Let's get the rigid body in the awake method then in the start, say rb.addForce transform the forward time speed force mode dot velocity change. So we're using transform the forward to get the forward direction from the bullet and we multiply it by our speed to get control over the speed. Lastly, we need to set the force mode to velocity change. So in this case, adding a force is the same as changing the velocity. Then inside the untrigger enter will destroy the bullet. The untrigger enter is a predefined method by Unity that will get called each time something enters the object's collider. So in this case we want the bullet to destroy itself when it comes in contact with anything. This is where you want to deal with damage in your projects. Go back to Unity, give a value to the speed. Then let's add a rigid body to the bullet and disable the gravity on it. Then add a capsule collider, set it to trigger, then set the direction to the Z axis. Adjust the size, apply the changes to the prefab and remove it from the scene. Start the game and as expected since you're watching the Golden Devs channel, everything works flawlessly. If you didn't completely understand something, rewatch the video or ask for help in the comments down below.
Watch this video next to make the camera follow the player and stay the golden developer.